Get all the latest on health with caller health questions and comments, breaking health news, the health alternative, outrage, and mystery of the week, Dr. Bob Martin Show, Sundays at 10 a.m. If you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, tune in to the Dr. Bob Martin Show. From erectile dysfunction to eczema, heartburn to headaches, carpal tunnel to how to lower cholesterol drug-free, Sunday mornings at 10 on Talk 1470 WNN. Attention seniors, are you as confused about your Medicare options as I was? Do what I did. Call I Will Advisors at 954-753-8080. They answered all my questions over the phone and when I was ready to make changes, since I can't drive. Debbie came to my house, which was so convenient. Debbie took care of everything for me. I was able to keep all my doctors and my same pharmacy down the street. Call Debbie at I Will Advisors, 954-753-8080. 954-753-8080. Talk health. Talk wealth. Talk politics. Talk 1470. Men 95.3 FM. WNN. The opinions expressed on the following sponsored program are strictly those of the host, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of this station, its staff, management, or sponsors. Are you a family caregiver? Are you caregiving for someone who can no longer take care of themselves? Are you overwhelmed? This is Caregiver Solutions Info with Marsha Teal. Marsha will be hosting an hour of true stories and information, tips and updates of the latest research and necessary information in the caregiving field, focusing on you, the family caregiver. An Alzheimer's disease and dementia care expert, Marsha has 15 years of hands-on experience at Arden Courts, a leader in assisted living dementia communities here in the U.S. Marsha covers everything you need to know as a family caregiver, especially if you care for a loved one with Alzheimer's disease or other related dementia or chronic illness. If you have a friend or relative that is also a family caregiver, call them now. They won't want to miss a minute. And let them know they can watch on caregiversolutions.info. And they can listen on WNN 1470 AM in South Florida or nationally on the iHeartRadio app. Now, sit back, relax, and learn from our host, Marsha Teal, as she brings information to you that may just be the caregiving solution you need. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Caregiver Solutions Info Show. I'm so glad that you could join us today. We have another wonderful show for you. Thank you for joining us, whether you're listening on local South Florida radio, 1470 AM or 95.3 FM, or whether you're tuning in on your smartphone, your, your iPad, uh, at caregiversolutions.info. I'm glad that you are here. We are live from Boca Raton, Florida. This show is meant for caregivers, caregivers specifically that care for someone that can't care for themselves, such as people that have Alzheimer's disease, uh, any other kind of, of dementia. Uh, we really focus on dementia-related caregiving, uh, but we learn about things that are good for all caregivers to know. And so whether it's information coming from an elder law attorney about legal documents that you need, whether it's from a social worker about psychosocial things that you need to know about, whether it's from a doctor uh, about medications, we have lots and lots of experts in their various fields that caregivers can learn from. And as is As importantly, we have actual caregivers that come on the show to tell their story. We have daughters and sons and grandchildren, and we have spouses. We have actually interviewed a couple of people with Alzheimer's disease. So I feel that this show is really beneficial because I've heard from so many of you uh, that people are actually learning and getting the information that they need. There's a lot of information out there, but it just seems that caregivers um, can never really get enough. So this show benefits a lot of people who might not be able to go to a seminar, who might not be able to attend a support group for various reasons, and this way they can tune in right in the comfort of their own home or in their car and get the information that they need. So today we're going to be talking about something that has really come to light ever since 
Michael J. Fox was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. Now, just like when President Reagan came out and announced that he was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease and Nancy Reagan became his caregiver, I think a lot of people in the country really, uh, for the first time, uh, didn't um, hide their heads or didn't act like it didn't matter because here the President of the United States has this terrible disease. And like Parkinson's, uh, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's are related in a lot of ways because they're both um, a, a debilitating disease. They both are progressive. Uh, you, but basically, Parkinson's disease can lead to dementia, uh, and Alzheimer's is a dementia. So there's a lot of similarities there, but there's also a lot of differences. So we're going to be talking about those differences to you today. And then later on in the show, we have a daughter who's going to join us, and her mother was actually diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. And we're going to hear from her, from her perspective, about what it's like with a family member and what she feels is um, the, the hardest part of dealing with that from her uh, daughter perspective. So not to delay, I want to go ahead and introduce to you my very special guest. Uh, her name is Denise Jordan, and she is the executive director of the American Parkinson Disease Association in West Palm Beach, Florida. Welcome, Denise. Oh, thank you so much. It's a, a delight to be on your show because it is so important for caregivers to understand what that loved one is going through. So. Yes, and you know, we you, you were here about a year or so ago, That's and right. we got some great response, and I felt it was time to bring you back and talk more about this disease, um, because I think, like I mentioned in the intro, people now are more curious about it, because they see Michael J. Fox, who we all know and love from television, and they can see how he looks on TV when he's interviewed on The Tonight Show or whatever the show might be, and they see what it has done to him. But I'm not sure everybody really understands it. And also, people that are going through it, I think we want to let them know that there's support for them, too. Correct. Yeah. Absolutely. So, as executive director of the American Parkinson Disease Association, what is your role and what is the goal of the organization? The goal, ultimately, the goal is to put an end to this neurodegenerative disease. And then two, I mean, in terms of our, our position is we want to be able to strengthen our optimism, strengthen our optimism, and make sure that we are helping to fulfill someone's life's goals in terms of making it a better place for them. You know, so that's, that's what we strive for every day. And then beside that is really to talk about our support we are the largest grassroots organization for Parkinson's disease. So we're the ones that, that basically are on the ground every day. And uh, we provide both information referral uh, programs, educational symposiums to make sure there's webinars that are available, as well as our support groups. And, and that support groups for those people who have Parkinson's as well as the caregivers. So it's very unique in, in that kind of uh, circumstances. Wow, that is unique. And, and then, you know, we have a whole health and wellness because that's really important because as we know that dopamine is, the lack of dopamine really kind of produces those cells or those lack of cells in the brain that really prevents us to, you know, really do what we need to do in terms of a neurological disease. Well, I'm glad that you're here because you are a great resource. Your organization um, is very much needed in the community. Are um, there other organizations in other states that are just like yours? Oh, yeah. Uh, there are 25 chapters uh, throughout the United States in terms of the APDA. We started in 1961 around the same time. Uh, as other organizations, and we really felt that in order for us to distinguish ourselves, we really wanted to have our ear to the ground. And so here's some staggering information for you. Okay. Um, South Florida is actually the second largest state behind California. California has 57,000 people who are diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. Mm. That's as of the 2010 census. 
So we're waiting for the new census to come out because we know there is a concentration here in particularly Boca. But in South Florida, there are 30,000. And uh, in actuality, most of them reside here in this concentrated area. So who gets Parkinson's? Yeah, so, well, we are so glad uh, that you're here as a resource because it is so important for people to have that opportunity to know who to reach out to, to get that information about where to go, to get the facts, the figures, the information, um, what to do, when to do it, you know, that is so, so important. And mm -hmm. at the end of our program today, I'm going to give everyone an opportunity to hear you uh, let them know how they can reach you Absolutely. and some of the other things that you can do for them. So, um, in a nutshell, if that is actually uh, possible, can you please explain uh, in layman's terms, what is Parkinson's disease? Parkinson's disease is a neurodegenerative disease. And it is caused by the lack of dopamine. Now, we all know that dopamine is what we get when we exercise. So, here's the correlation. That's right. So that's why that's so important. So one of those feel-good things. Absolutely. That, okay. But you have to have that, all right, in order to function brain-wise. Okay. And so the lack of that causes these kinds of um, progressions within the disease. So the Parkinson's disease is just a lack of dopamine in the brain that affects the brain negatively yes. and affects the cognitive functioning of a person. Absolutely. Okay. So... It's a lot like Alzheimer's disease because Alzheimer's disease, again, is progressive like Parkinson's disease, affects the brain cells, which affects the cognitive abilities of a person. And so we see parallel here, right. a lot of parallel. Um, do they, do they um, have a way to stop Parkinson's right now? They do not, no. Um, and that's similar to Alzheimer's, too, because there's no way to stop Alzheimer's. Except the big difference I see right here mm -hmm. is that they know, the researchers, the scientists, the doctors, know what causes Parkinson because it's a lack of the dopamine, right. but they still don't know what causes Alzheimer's disease. And I think that's one of the biggest differences there. Um, we're going to get into talking about um, the disease, the signs, the symptoms, um, a lot of the detail things that I think a lot of people would like to know. Um, and because it is progressive, you know, we want to talk about um, the different stages of it too. So we're going to walk through everyone here uh, through this whole scenario uh, with your help and with the help of um, a daughter whose mother was actually diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, and she's here to share her story, too. So we're going to be talking to her in just a few minutes. And I'm so glad that you're here because the two of you have never met. And I think that this is going to be a great opportunity for her to ask you questions and for you to lend your expertise directly to her and to the rest of our audience today. Absolutely. So thank I you so much. So we're going to go to our first commercial break, and when we come back, we'll hear from um, a daughter about her mom with Parkinson's. So stay tuned. Arden Courts is not just a place to live. It's a place to call home. Residential living combined with quality caregiving. This is the philosophy behind Arden Courts. Communities created exclusively for individuals with Alzheimer's disease and related dementia who would benefit from a safe, and structured environment. For additional information about any of the unique services Arden Courts provides, call 888-478-2410 to locate a community nearest you. Inquire about our educational seminars, resource library, or support groups, or simply feel free to ask questions you may have about Alzheimer's and related dementias. At Arden Courts, we know, we understand, and we can help because memory care is all we do. Remember, call 888-478-2410 for additional information about any of the unique services Arden Courts provides. The inability to recognize the obvious often occurs with Alzheimer's, particularly among the family members who care for them. When the time comes for you to decide that someone you love needs more help than you can give, Will you be able to recognize it? 
Don't wait for a crisis to make the decision for you. Talk to us. We know. We understand. We can help. Arden Courts. On caregiversolutions.info. If you have a question or wish to share a story, call into the show at 888-565-1470 and talk with Marsha. Now, back to Caregiver Solutions. Welcome back to Caregiver Solutions. My guest today is Denise Jordan, who is the Executive Director of the American Parkinson Disease Association in West Palm Beach, Florida. And joining me now with her is Tanya Miller. Tanya is a daughter whose mother was diagnosed with Parkinson disease, and she's here with us today to share her story. Hi, Tanya. Welcome. Thank you. So, Tanya, let me ask you right away. Uh, your mom was diagnosed, um, and how old is she, if you don't mind me asking? She's 67. Okay. And how long ago was she diagnosed with Parkinson disease? She was diagnosed about six years ago. Okay. And mm -hmm. she is here local, or is she out of state? No, she lives in San Diego, California. Well, that's far from you. Um, that is very far from you, and you uh, obviously are down here in South Florida where you live, so it's hard for you to see her all the time. But when you got the word um, from your family that she was diagnosed, what did you think? Shock. Shock, disbelief. Um, you know, young vibrant woman, very active, uh, very capable, just always a multitasker, um, juggling a million things, uh, very athletic, you know. So, so it just was hard for you to believe that this was something that, you know, was, was affecting her and, you know, did it take a while for the family to kind of get, take a grip of it? Absolutely. Um, it was... Yeah, it took a long time to let it digest for all of us. Um, you know, I think that uh, there were some people that noticed, friends of the family, that, um, you know, my mom seemed uh, very rigid, um, stiff. When she was walking, her arms would go like this instead uh -huh. of down by her side. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. um, and just noticed... Uh, Things like that, like the way her gait, you know, the way she was standing. So, um, who does she live with? Friends. With my stepfather. Okay. So mm -hmm. it was more friends rather than your stepfather who lives with her that actually noticed these things. I think so. Yeah. yeah. In retrospect, looking back, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, so when he became aware of these, is that what prompted him to make an appointment to go to the doctor to see what was going on? Yes. And how did your mom feel about that? Did she did she at that time feel that there was something maybe wrong or was she in denial herself? Uh, yeah, I think that she thought that there could be something not right. Um, she was probably nervous and didn't really want to tackle that and no. Mm -hmm. um, but I, you know, I, I remember that they when they went to the doctor and uh, it was either she knew that it was either going to be she was the three of uh, possible diagnoses that she came up with herself was that she either had ms als or parkinson's wow okay just so. from some of her symptoms yes well denise that brings me back to symptoms of Parkinson yeah. disease, let's talk about that. We we know what it is: the lack mm -hmm. of dopamine in the brain, causing um, cognitive dysfunction. But it affects the muscles. I mean, everybody knows it affects the muscles because when you hear the word Parkinson disease, I think the first thing that people think of are the tremors, right? They people the, with the tremors in their hand. But that's not the only physical symptom, is it? No, it isn't. What are some of the other motor symptoms that people might be experiencing? So you talked about the rigidity. Mm -hmm. That's one of them. You know, when you're not swinging your arms, but the arms kind of stay you know, very close together. Um, sometimes it's the gait and the balance. Sometimes it could be that all of a sudden they start to, their voice gets lower. Mm -hmm. Then you have the tremor. And then you can have almost like a blank look, which is the uh, necadasia. So what happens to that is that it, you could do this 
and and they don't blink so there's a you know it's almost like a mask where they don't have a facial uh, expression at all hmm. so those are some of, of, of the key uh, factors and that's to be expected if you you know know that Parkinson affects the muscles because you need the muscles to balance you yes. need muscles to move and so it's going to affect a lot of different things does everybody get the tremors no not at all and that's why it's not a cookie cutter you know because it affects the bodies very differently from each person so Same. one may have you know one of the symptoms or two symptoms and the other may not even look like and your mom was actually a what we call a young onset because most people get it around 65. That was going to be my next question right. is what is the average age that people get diagnosed with Parkinson's around disease? Around 65 and then there's about another 10 percent. In fact I'll tell you just a very short story. Someone walked into our office not long about two weeks ago and said that his girlfriend was just diagnosed at 26 years old. I said that's the 10 percent. Oh wow. So it can strike young, like yes, in the case like of Michael, Michael J. J. Fox. Fox. Yeah, That's I don't know exactly how old he was. He was in, in, in his early thirties. Yes, yes, somewhere in his thirties, I right. believe. Thirty-one, yeah. thirty-two, somewhere um, around so, there. So, but the early onset could be in the twenties. That's right, and all the way through. Absolutely. Wow. Yes. So uh, again, there's parallels between Parkinson disease and Alzheimer's disease because when we're talking about symptoms. What are the symptoms? Just like in Parkinson's, someone doesn't have all the symptoms. They may have one or two and not others. Yeah. Same thing with Alzheimer's disease. So sometimes it's missed because they don't have the traditional, what you would think Parkinson's look with the tremors, and they may have the balance problem that you mentioned, mm -hmm. or they just might be moving slow. Correct. So how does someone know when to get that looked at if if there's a problem because if they're not doing the tremors it's nothing physical and maybe they're just slow or maybe rigid maybe they think they have arthritis because they're maybe have some pain or they're you know stiff and maybe it was that tennis elbow that's bothering them and oh it'll go away do you do you get this a lot where people don't even think about getting it checked out um, yes, but here, here's the parallel to that is dementia and Parkinson's are very close associated. So sometimes it's misdiagnosed given, you know, the person's, uh, you know, MO. Mm -hmm. So therefore it could be misdiagnosed for, you know, maybe a year, maybe six months before it really is defined as Parkinson's. Right. And so what happens is we always advocate that um, someone sees a movement disorder specialist because the neurologist is, you know, it's sort of like the generalist. The movement disorder specialist is the one who's gone for another year for his or her fellowship and specifically gears towards Parkinson's. Okay. So that's... So Parkinson's has this set of symptoms, right? And I know that it can lead to dementia because when you're talking about affecting the muscles, it can affect the brain. But does all Parkinson disease lead to dementia or is it sometimes? Sometimes. Okay. Very small. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that's a little bit, again, like mild cognitive impairment with Alzheimer's disease. They'll start out as mild cognitive impairment and it may stop there and not progress into Alzheimer's. So, you know, this, these are things that people need to be aware of because sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. Now, Tanya, your mom, who was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease six years ago, uh, she's been regularly going to the doctors and going to the movement mo specialist. Mo movement disorder specialist okay. at UCSD. And yeah. how's that going? Um, it's, it's going, it's going well. I mean, she, in term, she's doing everything that she should be doing, um, you know, to help in the process. She's going to, um, she does OT, um, occupational therapy. Uh, I know she has a lot of trouble with writing. She really can't write anymore, um, very easily. So she does, um, occupational therapy. Um, some physical therapy. She takes walks regularly because we know how important exercise is. 
um, and Parkinson's disease. And so she also does um, gy- gyver tonics. It's gyver like tonics? Gyver tonics. Tell it's, me what that is. It's like a form of Pilates. And she loves her instructor. And she goes for like a private lesson a couple times a week. And it's really good for stretching the muscles. Mm-hmm. And um, it's, you know... Wonderful form of exercise for her. A little bit like Pilates, yoga, because that's all stretching, flexibility, balance, things like that. Yeah, similar to that. But then something happened because you told me a couple years ago that she went to the doctor and you tell the story. Yeah, so we were noticing um, some cognitive issues uh, start to arise. And again, it's like so much for a family to deal with when you get a diagnosis, especially at a young age, the way my mom was, um, to wrap your head around the fact that you have Parkinson's disease. Um, And then to add the element of feeling like you have some cognitive disabilities, it's like you almost don't want to know about it. You want to close the door and just say, this isn't really happening. So, um, but finally, a couple years ago, um, you know, a little bit more than a couple years ago, probably two and a half years ago, they were seen by a doctor and um, my mom was evaluated and um, it was determined that she does, did have uh, like an early onset form, form of Alzheimer's. So your so. mom is diagnosed with Parkinson disease and Alzheimer's disease. Yes. And because Parkinson, I mean, the, I think the next normal question would be if Parkinson can cause dementia, are they not saying it's the dementia from the Parkinson or how are they determining that it is truly Alzheimer's or do they not really know? Um, I don't think that they really know. They've seen many, many doctors in this arena of that specialize in both diseases. Um, and so sometimes we'll get differing opinions, um, but... When it all boil, what it all boils down to is for the family to understand, and for us in layman terms, the doctors pretty much say we're treating it as two different diseases. My mom sees a movement disorder specialist for her Parkinson's, and she sees a neurologist for Alzheimer's. So she has two separate doctors treating it as two separate diseases. Well, I'm so sorry mm-hmm. for for that. I mean, your mom got mm-hmm. hit with a double whammy there, and it bad enough to have Parkinson and then Alzheimer's and the cognitive decline on that. Did she mm-hmm. notice the cognitive decline herself or was that noticed by the family? Um, I think that it was noticed by the family and made made her aware. Maybe she did notice it but didn't want to say. Mm-hmm. Um, so she, you know, I think it was both. Mm-hmm. A little yeah. bit of both. I think that the hardest part for her, I think, in this journey has was um, not being able to drive and losing the driver's license. I think that was mm. probably the hardest. I mean, she's a young woman, mm-hmm. you know. Independent. She, totally independent, like capable, you know, just love to babysit the grandchildren and drive over to help out whenever she can. Um, and she still does, but she can't drive. Yeah. So um, it's it's challenging. That was That was probably a really hard to accept losing that piece of your independence yeah that that's a big one you know for both women and men that are independent and uh it's normal you know for people that are early age when they have this disease to be in denial to right denise to think there's nothing really wrong with me I'm, absolutely and i can I, still I do this i'm gonna keep trying mm-hmm. yeah that's- so that's very normal that she maybe knew but didn't say anything but at least she went and got the testing and and you know working on what you can do to do that so denise um we're talking about these physical symptoms but like alzheimer's disease there's other things that are going on in the body that can present itself because of the parkinson disease can you tell us a little bit about that Sure. So there's all kinds of things that happen during someone who has Parkinson's. For instance, lack of sleep, Mm -hmm. voice gets lower, the swallowing could be impaired, and therefore then there's a speech pathologist. Is that that because the muscles in the throat are getting affected and it's hard to swallow? Actrophy in terms of, you know, it's the muscles that that can't contract the way it needs to. Uh, The voice volume is, is lowered. 
Um, sometimes there's hallucinations that happen during the course of the night. I've known, you know, people who said, you know, they had to move out of their bedrooms because, I mean, it was so violent and, and that they see, you know, so many other things that, you know, normally someone else would not. It's all real. Yeah. It's just, and know, it even affects person. your vision, doesn't it? Uh, yes, it does. Yes, it does. So all that has to be checked and, you know, to make sure that we, because the medicines like the carbidopa, lipidopa, I mean, they do have an effect on them. Mm -hmm. You know, so, you know, uh, one day, I mean, they may feel great. And then, you know, maybe the next hour or so, uh, it, not so good. And, you know, it's the mood swings that happen, the depression that happens and, and, and the anger and everything else in terms of even their abilities to have that independence. I mean, I think that that when you were talking about the driving part, I have heard so many stories. I mean, it's, it's like, you know, this is like their last part of being independent, and mm -hmm. then you take that away. Yeah. And it's, it's really difficult. And with the balance that we talked about earlier, um, there's also something about them um, not sure if it's the muscles with the balance or something going on in the head that's causing them to get dizzy, because I know they can, dizziness is a little part of it too. That's correct, possibly. that's correct. And because when you're feeling, you know, unbalanced, you know, it's getting up out of the chair, getting up out of the bed, and then if you have that fall, and it's, it's it's you know, it just puts a stop to to everything because they don't they don't want to fall, and and yet that you know it's it's the prevention of that, and then trying to really kind of relearn how to get up out of chairs, how to walk. I mean, somebody that is dizzy, that gets up out of a chair and falls. They might think, oh, it's vertigo, right? Because that's symptoms of vertigo. Absolutely. So, so much of this looks like other things. So it's very, very important for people to go ahead and get it checked out. Exactly. I mean, I think same thing with Alzheimer's disease. We're talking about something not right, don't wait. And I'm sure that you preach that to all your caregivers, too. To you, you better believe it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's it's funny because it's like APDA. We're, we're treating two people. I mean, it's the caregiver, the care partner, and as well as the person with Parkinson's disease. Yeah. Because what happens to you as a, as a family member is you neglect yourself because you're trying to take care of that loved one. Mm -hmm. And it happens all the time. Yeah. Tanya, how do you think, speaking of caregivers, how do you think your stepfather is managing being the primary caregiver for your mom? I'm gonna say that I'm extremely blessed that um, he is managing just, he's he's got the patience of an angel and the care and the love and he is handling himself the best that I think a person ever could in his situation. And uh, thank God there's so much love surrounding my mom. She's an amazing human being, and um, lot of siblings and family and friends. So um, he's he's handling it the best that he can, and I'm extremely grateful to him. Yeah, that's great. That's good because support is so important in family support, friends support, community support. We're going to talk a little bit more about that later in the show because uh, we're going to give people an opportunity to know how to get that support from here, our local uh, chapter. Um, so we're going to take a quick commercial break, and we'll be back with more from Denise and Tanya. So don't go away. The inability to recognize the obvious often occurs with Alzheimer's, particularly among the family members who care for them. When the time comes for you to decide that someone you love needs more help than you can give, will you be able to recognize it? Don't wait for a crisis to make the decision for you. Talk to us. We know. We understand. We can help. Arden Courts. Wandering is a common problem for people with Alzheimer's or related dementias. It's also a problem for family members who care for them. Keeping them safe and secure means never letting your guard down. And even though deep down you know it's time, it hurts to have to ask for help. 
but it could hurt them even more if you didn't. We know. We understand. 888-565-1470 and talk with Marsha. Now, back to Caregiver Solutions. Welcome back to Caregiver Solutions. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank our national sponsor, Arden Court's Memory Care Community. Arden Court's is a assisted living specifically for people with memory loss, whether it's from Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson disease, or a host of other types of dementia. And they have about 50 Arden Court's located all around the country. And one of the things that Arden Court's does besides taking care uh, very good care of the people that, that have the memory loss is taking care of the caregiver. And by doing so, uh, it makes everybody a little bit um, calmer. Uh, it, it gives that support to the caregivers that is essential. So in addition to support groups and seminars, Art and Courts offers a resource library. And one of the things that they do offer in their resource library is this book. It's called The 36-Hour Day. This is a family guide to caregiving for people with memory loss. And it's written by Dr. Peter Rabins and Nancy Mace. And it's a wonderful book as a resource to get information, uh, explanations, examples, definitions. If you would like to have this book to put on um, your shelf to refer to when you need to find something out about what's going on in your caregiving journey, all you have to do is call the toll-free number of Arden Courts and they'll be happy to get your name and address and mail a copy to your home. So just call this number, which is 888-478-2410. Again, 888-478-2410. 2410 and tell them that you heard about the free book the 36 hour day on the caregiver solutions info program and they'll be happy to accommodate you and get one right to you as soon as possible so i'm here today we're talking about alzheimer disease uh we're comparing it a little bit with um Parkinson and and now we're focusing on Parkinson disease because there are parallels but there's also a lot of differences and as the expert um, to give information about the disease we have Denise uh, Jordan she is the executive director of the American Parkinson Disease Association right here in South Florida in West Palm Beach and um, also my guest Tanya Miller whose mother was diagnosed at, at an early age with Parkinson's disease and then on top of that several years later with Alzheimer's disease so we're talking about uh, what the symptoms are what the cause is uh, let's talk a little bit now about one of the I think you touched on it before Denise uh, about the uh, hallucinations and uh, the delusions that can come because when someone that has this um, disease gets this horrible, um, you know, delusions or hallucinations, and sometimes it's without any warning, right? Uh, it can be very scary for a caregiver. And we need to distinguish um, between what is a hallucination and what is a delusion, right? So hallucination is seeing something that's not there. That is correct. Right? And a delusion is believing something that's false. Correct. Is that, did I that get is that correct. right? Okay. Absolutely. So how, how prevalent uh, in someone that's been diagnosed with Parkinson's disease do these things occur? occur? I, I can't really put a number on it, but I will say that there are some that do, that do experience uh, hallucinations. And for instance, like we had a gentleman about three weeks ago who talked about he was actually a young onset uh, when he first was diagnosed. He's in his 70s right now. And he said that um, they had to modify his medicine because he started to hallucinate. And he says he, he, he was around his his son and realizes, says, well, my goodness, he says, you know, I've never had this before. What can we do to, to stop this? And so they modified the medicine because sometimes uh, that's what happens. You know, uh, your body becomes accustomed to the levodopa, carbidopa. And then sometimes they'll have to make an adjustment either up or down um, that will help 
with those symptoms. So yes, hallucinations is, is part of it. And there's other forms of dementia that also cause hallucinations. A lot of Lewy body yes. uh, can cause that, where people see people or things that aren't really there. That's correct. Uh, and that can be very disconcerting for a caregiver, um, not knowing how to address that or how to handle that situation. And then you have the, the delusion. Um, I know with uh, Alzheimer's disease, um, people are delusional of, of a lot of things, but with it comes paranoia where they think someone's stealing from them or their spouse is having an yes. affair. Um, so that can happen the same way in Parkinson. That is correct. All right. Um, so how do you, as, um, you know, as a resource, how do you tell your caregivers how to deal with that B besides getting the adjustment? Are there any practical things that you say to them that how do they deal with the situation well, if they come across well, it? Well, first of all, you got to get them to talk because there's an awful lot of isolation that comes with this. They lose their friends. They lose their family. And I'm not talking about yours because yours... Yours, I mean, you're, you're spot on and you're, you're very loving and supportive, but there are others that have experienced the total opposite, which is, you know, friends that they used to be able to go out with, so they're isolated. You know, now they're just caregiving 24-7, so there is no outlet. And to get them to talk is often a struggle. And, and it's, it's like pulling teeth, trying to, you know, to uncover some of the both anger, disappointment, shock, frustrations. I mean, there's a myriad of, you know, emotions that people go through. And then uh, oftentimes what happens for a caregiver is they stop dealing with themselves. So it's all about their loved ones. And therefore they start to neglect themselves, you know, whether it be socially, you know, uh, sometimes those symptoms of going out is, is a problem and problematic because some of them do wind up with a dribble. Um, so therefore, that's very embarrassing. So they don't want that, you know, people to say, oh, my gosh, you know, you look at that person, you know, they should stay home. And I mean, so they hear comments of that nature. So there's all kinds of ways in, in us to get that out of them and really just to have a supportive area where they can talk about their issues that are very different subset from the person who has Parkinson's. Yeah, and sometimes it's easier to, um, you know, not share, but you're, like you said, you're holding that in, and then it's going to come out sideways in some way. Um, and I think what's important for caregivers to, to know is that if they're okay now as a caregiver, like your dad is doing, your stepdad is doing fantastic, but because it's a progressive disease, to be aware that just because I don't need help now, be aware that things are going to change and not, you know, don't be a martyr to take it all on yourself and do it by yourself, right? That is correct. And when they're surrounded by other caregivers, it brings a different dimension to it, you know, more so than it does clinical. So, I mean, you know, oftentimes we'll have a, an MSW, a master's of social worker, you know, really kind of sit down and kind of drill and try to, you know, pull things out of people. But then when they realize, oh, that happened to you, well, what was your, what was your expression, you know, or how did you deal with this? And mm -hmm. then, you know, it starts a dialogue mm -hmm. and that people really get them, mm -hmm. you know, because they're in a very similar situation. Yeah, wow. So there are medications that are on the market right now that, are addressing some of the symptoms. Um, is the common one is a cinnamon. Is that one? Cinemac, of them? That's the only that's one right. that I know that's of. That's the one my mom's. That's the one. Dopa, Carver Dopa. They they have various names, but those are the two standardized um, forms of medicine. And then there's a time release that's out now that you know you can actually have it inserted. This is like a pump just like a diabetic has, so it releases, you know, this certain dopamine at that, you know, particular times. You have to watch out in terms of your proteins about, you know, uh, how you take proteins and, and what that effect will do. Um, there are certain foods that might exasperate the, the symptoms, so, but it, it depends. Like what, I'm, now you've really got me, <laughs> me curious, too. what kind of foods? Yeah, then? so for instance, like um, it might be red meat. You know that will set the person off 
you know, and, and they not know that what happens is um, those symptoms become exasperated during yeah. the course of, of the of the night. But or it's day. not always the same food for everybody, the same right? Food for everyone. Okay. No, absolutely. So a nutritionist is even important yes. because they it has to be a team effect. It has to be the neurologist, the movement disorder specialist, the OT, the PT, the speech pathologist. It has to be the nutritionist because all they have, they have to work in concert together. Oftentimes what we find is there's a disconnect between all of them. You know, no one's talking to each other. Mm -hmm. And so therefore what happens with the patient is, you know, they're, they're caught in the web. Yeah. You know, so but if they can work together get in everybody concert. Get on the same page and address it together. That's right. So because Parkinson um, is a progressive disease like Alzheimer's disease, and there are certain stages that people go through with Alzheimer's, I would think that there's also stages with Parkinson. Is that right? Yes, that is right. Can you describe those? kind of quickly so what happens is there's five stages uh, so one may be you you have a gait problem the second might be you have a gait and maybe a balance problem then there may be echinacea it could be uh, rigidity so each stage brings on it and then of course when you get to the fifth stage of course you might have a multiplicity of a lot of of the symptoms together. Okay, so it's just a progression of symptoms that, that just start piling on top of each other. That's correct. Yeah. Is there a, a time frame? Is there a length of time that people usually live with Parkinson's before they die from it? They actually don't die from it. Okay. They die with it. They die with it. That's right. So they die from things unrelated? Unrelated. It could be cardi, you know, some kind of uh, heart disease. It could be, you know, along with uh, diabetes, you know, and things that could be attributed to and compound Parkinson's disease. Um, it, but no one dies from no it one dies from it specifically. Yeah, now Tanya, in your case, if if it's true that your mother has a dual diagnosis of both Parkinson and Alzheimer's, we know that Alzheimer's can cause things to happen in the body that will, um, you know, make people, um, you know, uh, p p pass away you know, sooner because the brain cells are dying off and then they forget how to swallow and and they can't do certain things. I mean, there are stages also. So um, these are just a lot of things to be aware of uh, with all of these stages. Um, you have an opportunity here um, because <laughs> you have an expert on the disease right next to you. And I was wondering if there are some questions that you might have, Tanya, to ask of Denise about your mom or how maybe uh, you could help with her uh, disease progression? Sure. Um, I try to be an optimist whenever I can. So, um, you know, one of the questions was just like a fun kind of a question. I wanted to know if you had a suggestion of something that like when I go out to visit her in San Diego, that would be like a special thing that I could do with my mom. Um, that would be f something fun for us to do together, but it would be helpful for her in some way, you know, to tackle uh, her disease. You know, like for instance, one of the things we do is we like to go for a walk on, on the beach and that helps. And, you know, but I wanted to get maybe another suggestions besides that. Sure. Is she a swimmer? No. She but maybe, maybe, I don't know, but not. But even, no. <laughs> she doesn't even have to be a swimmer. She could just be in the water, you know, where, you know, and, and you can do some exercises together, which would be fun. Movement, right? You know, movement. Absolutely. Anything with movement. Anything. If it's dancing, does she like to dance? It's interesting that you said that. Actually, sure. she does like to dance. And the last time we were in San Diego, my son, who's in the lobby waiting outside, um, he's he was 14 at the time. And one of my mom's favorite songs came on. And he just kind of picked her up and started dancing with her. And it was just such a great, beautiful moment. And it really actually reminds me now that I'm thinking about it, how she probably, it would probably be wonderful for her to do mm -hmm. Absolutely. with my stepdad or, you know, that would probably yeah. be a really great activity right. or with me when I come, you know. And tango was really good, you know, anything that's, it, and it's interesting because the tango actually, because there's a slow moving movement. And if, if your mom and your stepdad could, could, you know, get to a ballroom or even in the house. That's a neat idea. Put on some music and then kind of enjoy it all. 
and, and it'd, be, it'd be something that they could do together. Yeah, and that's the key, right? If you don't move it, you lose it. You bet. You want that's for all of us. Isn't it interesting? Yeah, for everybody, but especially um, get those muscles moving, keeping them going uh, because of the rigidity. So, you that's know, right. it does. Do they... Um, do the muscles ever get so tight that they can't be released? Do they really... Um yes, there are some that have extreme uh, without movement. So what happens is they're restricted, but it's interesting. We have a dance program here in, in Boca, and, and you might want to check to find out uh, Dance for Parkinson's. It was actually started in New York City. name is um, Mark Morris. And if you look it up, you'll find out if there's a, a, a studio. But what happens is, is that they, they do this thing where they actually sit and they go through the movements. Now, you know, m most men say ballet. Oh, no, I'm not going to do that. But then they find out that it's, it's all about the movement. And then they, they have um, someone there who plays the music. And then at some point within the half hour or an hour, they get up and they're literally going through the movements and it's extraordinary. So, so they enjoy it. It's something yes. fun to Correct. do, but it helps them at the same That's time. That's right. And then, of course, you know, all the songs that they were used to. I mean, they start singing and, you know, and funny because there are people who, who can't move their arms, but you could see them try to move their feet. Or vice versa, mm -hmm. you know, so it's the familiarity of, of the songs that they play and, you know, just and that everyone is doing it and they're helping each other. That's a good thing to know. So I hope that becomes uh, all across the country. This Yes, uh, yes. yes in for fact, Parkinson. even in Europe, they're, they're doing it. That's awesome. Well, we're going to take our last commercial break <laughs> and we come back. We'll uh, hear more from Tanya and Denise. So we'll be right back. The inability to recognize the obvious often occurs with Alzheimer's, particularly among the family members who care for them. When the time comes for you to decide that someone you love needs more help than you can give, will you be able to recognize it? Don't wait for a crisis to make the decision for you. Talk to us. We know. We understand. We can help. Arden Courts. Wandering is a common problem for people with Alzheimer's or related dementias. It's also a problem for family members who care for them. Keeping them safe and secure means never letting your guard down. And even though deep down you know it's time, it hurts to have to ask for help. But it could hurt them even more if you didn't. We know. We understand. We can help. Arden Courts. The inability to recognize the obvious often occurs with Alzheimer's, particularly among the family members who care for them. When the time comes for you to decide that someone you love needs more help than you can give, will you be able to recognize it? Don't wait for a crisis to make the decision for you. Talk to us. We know. We understand. We can help. Arden Courts. <laughs> 